David was a king, was the king of Israel. And we all know how God chose him by the hand of the prophet Samuel and how God anointed him and how God used him against several other forces, including giving him an ability to look after the sheep. But there is something that I would want us to look at in Second Samuel chapter number 21, verse number one. I want us to see that David is faced with a situation, the situation which is rather economical. It's not just an army, it's not just another nation rising up against Israel or against David, but it's a famine that has come over the land of Israel. And this famine lasted for three years. There was hunger in Israel. At the time, David was king. There was lack. There was the opposite of prosperity in Israel. Yet the man on the seat was the chosen of the Lord. And yet still, there was famine, hunger. The economy was so terrible. Having a man appointed and anointed by God reigning over Israel, still there was hunger for three years. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then there was a famine in the days of David three years. Three years. Year after year. Year after year. And so David the year after year, take note of that. Because this is going to describe your situation. If you see a level of consistency, a level of organization in your disorganized life, when the attacks are consistent, this one came year after year, year after another year. The famine persisted. Year after year. And David inquired of and the Lord. And then what David did was to inquire. So immediately you see, had David not inquired, the famine was not going to last for three years. It, it would have gone further. So the three years was not the original intent or intention of the famine. The famine had come to stay in Israel forever. So the three years is simply because of what David did to put an end to this calamity. What he did was to inquire. So it means they suffered for three years and God did not reveal to them the reason behind their poverty. God did not tell them why they were suffering for three years. You might want to blame God for not telling you the reason for your suffering and he's blaming you for not inquiring. So the suffer continues until you decide to probe into the matter, to question certain things. This problem that has continued with you you can count now. It has been on you for years now. And some of you, you think this problem is going to decide to quit. The famine was there for three years. Not according to plan. The plan was more than three years. Probably at first, David blamed the global warming thing. He had other reasons. I'm sure. Until it got to a point where he said, no. Let's hear from the Lord. Let's not listen to this weather report guy. Let's inquire from God. Where is this thing coming from? And guess what? God told him exactly why there was a famine for three years. And the Lord answered, and the Lord what? Answer. You must know 
that it is today that God is going to answer you. Why? It's today. Everyone here, in any area that you are lacking, there is a reason that you are not aware of. You will be told why. You will know what to do, where to correct. And the famine that would have continued with you for the next five, six, seven years will end this year because of this inquiry. It's this year. Are you telling me that you can really, literally ask God, why am I poor? And he answers you. And he gives you the reason. Yes. That's the scripture. And the Lord answered, It is because of the Gibeonites. It is for Saul and his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. Amen. That's the reason. This famine was introduced, it was brought into Israel. It was imported by Saul. He spilled blood. He killed the Gibeonites after having had a covenant of life with them. There was a covenant between Israel and the Gibeonites that we are not going to hate each other. And Saul, wanting to make Israel and Judah happy, he went against a covenant of life and a covenant of peace. And he killed the Gibeonites. And it is the, that covenant that was broken by Saul that has made nature to also break a covenant. So a covenant that you see being broken in the sky is as a result of a covenant that you broke. Saul killed the Gibeonites. And when David was told by God it is because because of the blood of the Gibeonites that it is not raining. It is because of the blood. The blood. The blood of the Gibeonites. Rain can no longer fall in Israel because of a Gibeonite whose right was violated by Saul. And what did David do? He did not go and anoint the Gibeonites. He did not pray against the Gibeonites. He went to the Gibeonites and he said, what shall I do? How much am I supposed to pay so that you, the Gibeonites, can bless Israel, which is the inheritance of the Lord? Wherefore, David said unto the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you and wherewith shall I make the atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? He is asking the offended the reason behind his poverty were the Gibeonites. I've suffered enough. Let's settle the matter. I now know you are the reason why I'm suffering. Let's make an atonement so that you can bless Israel. The inheritance of the Lord. This is another stage because there are people that I know to be so broke, so poor because of certain individuals that they touched against a covenant. And no matter where they go to pray, they will have to find the Gibeonite and talk to the Gibeonite until the Gibeonite blesses the inheritance of the Lord. Look at the Gibeonites, they are not as chosen as Israel was. And yet they have power to shut the heavens over Israel. There are people whose blood you cannot touch, you cannot spill. Some of you, you will inquire, you will be told it is because of your parents. You will know it's not because of you, maybe it's because of your father. It's because of Saul. Whatever was done by Saul before you came to the scene. Right now you are in a place where you are beginning to question your anointing as David. Was I really anointed 
to be king over Israel. Why is there a famine during my days? What you are beginning to doubt now is the presence of God over your life. And yet God is saying it's not because of you. There was a man before you who broke a covenant. And it's no longer reigning, not in his days, but in your days. The hunger is in your days. Lack of money is in your days. Unemployment is happening in your days. So David says, let's have some talks here. And then David went to the Gibeonites, and the Gibeonites said, we are not going to ask for gold or for silver from the house of Saul. It's not gold. Yes, you have to make a payment for what you did, but not money, not silver. We want the people involved. That man that slaughtered, that killed us, has kids. He has children. He has children. And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver, nor gold of Saul, nor of his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you? And they so, so, so the please, I know you don't, have, you don't need money, or, but just tell me, what, what am I supposed, what's the payment now? So they're about to tell him now. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel. Mm -hmm. Let seven men of his sons... We need seven. Give us an... We need seven of his men. Be delivered unto us. And we are going to hang them. And we will hang them up unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. It's not unto the devil. We will hang them up unto the Lord. The Lord. If God sees that, then he will give you rain. The Gibeonites were there. They are also the inhabitants of Israel where it is not raining. It's only David who is not aware why it's not raining. But the Gibeonites know it's because of us. And already they have a price set. If David is to come, when they are tired of suffering, they will come. We will tell them they have already... They, the plan was already set. So David, you give us seven children of the culprit. Again, you see how some of these cases are handed over to the next generation. These kids are about to die because of what their father did. And the king said, I will give you seven. And he went on to get the seven, you keep on reading, you will see that Mephibosheth also was supposed to be a part of that. But the Bible then says, but David spared Mephibosheth because of a covenant that he had with Jonathan, the son of Saul. At first you thought the only favor that was given to Mephibosheth was for him to have access into the palace and to eat from the king's table. But here comes a day when his life was demanded. Some of you are not even aware that your date of death has already passed. You're, you're, you're not aware. Your being alive today is as a result of a covenant. Your place is in the cemetery now. They've been waiting for you ever since and they're wondering where is he? You're still here. Because of a there is a covenant of life. When life was introduced in this ministry, death had arrived. Death had arrived. And life was introduced. Are you following this? And at the end of the chapter, you will see that even the Lord was entreated. The curse was removed over Israel when these men were killed and it started raining. Economically, the nation was restored. But the issue is, he had to inquire. For the three years to be three years, it was because of the inquiry. 
he had to inquire and God said this is the reason had he not if we were not going to have this service today this problem was going to continue so it's up to us to decide whether it's three years it means it has to stop now or we delay it's up to us it was never up to God it was up to David to question to ask why isn't this problem going year after year and God said this is the issue but how come you never told, you didn't tell me you never asked you did not specifically design a service for that there was no Sunday service for that you might not have a way of knowing unless you inquire you think it is weather let's inquire you think it's a disease let's inquire let's inquire you have to be told you have to see the root cause and it doesn't end there God by his special grace he has also given us the art he has empowered us with his power to judge matters even if it was done by your forefather if it was done by Saul and now David is coming after you David is coming after you the seven sons of Saul David the man that you see coming after you would think David has something against you know David is being sent by the Gibeonites to get you do you want to be the payment would you want to be the one to die so that your family can survive we are going to inquire and we have learned from scripture that if you inquire from the Lord the Lord will what answer he will answer you he will tell you where the famine is coming from you will have this privilege now of seeing because if you don't then get to see how it started you might repeat the same mistake if God doesn't tell you it is because of the Gibeonites, you might not seek to reconcile. There are people who are in poverty today simply because there is someone where they need to go and simply say, I'm sorry. As simple as that. It's because of the Gibeonites. There is someone that needs to forgive you. There is someone that you need to forgive. That bitterness might actually be holding you down. But how do I know? You inquire. And the Lord answered and said, it is because of Saul and because of the Gibeonites. And from that day, he began to correct the situation. So you will know exactly where to go and adjust. Whether it's your character, you will be told now. And sometimes it comes as your character. And you go further, you inquire, what about my character? You will be told exactly what you need to adjust in your character so that your life can become successful. You know exactly where to address from this place after this inquiry. Why am I emphasizing on that part? Because if you don't get to see that it is because of the Gibeonites, it is because of... So if you don't get to see that part, you are likely to repeat it. You keep making the same mistake that is causing money to fly away from you. So when you inquire, you are going to be told where to correct. Every problem that you are having has a source. If you don't know the source, you might keep going to the same source. Why? Because an evil spirit... Imagine, for, for instance, let's say... I'm just giving an example. Let's say... Let's say a demon comes from the water into your body. You will know it came from the water when it keeps drawing you closer to the water. That's why the father said, this spirit in my son, it keeps throwing him in the fire and in water. It's an indication of the nature of spirits. 
because they want to keep on going back to their source to relate. Just like when you're flying to any country, any country of your choice with the Emirates, you will have to go through Dubai. Every plane goes through Dubai, Emirates. To, it's, it's, a, it's an act of submission to their home area. Some of these demons will keep drawing you to their places of origins. If it's a sin, you will still be dragged to the same act. And every time you go back, that demon gets fortified, it gets, gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So unless you are told the source, you are, unless you are told it is the Gibeonites, you will keep doing certain things. And those spirits, they become stronger and stronger and stronger. And some of those spirits, the day that you know, oh, this is where they came from, and you avoid certain things, suddenly they become to, you, you start to weakening those spirits. They become weak and weak. Even their influence over you gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker until you can no longer be influenced financially in a wrong way. Why is it the man that with a legion of demons was dwelling in the tombs? Why? What is he doing there? In the graveyard. It's a spirit of death inviting him to that place. When he got there, he felt like, I'm at home. It was good for the spirits, but not good for him. So there could be certain habits that you are going to be taught by the Holy Spirit today to change. You will be told exactly how it started. Who here would want to inquire? May the Lord show you now.